Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video, my update for the week that was. Yes, it's Tuesday the 14th and I am late. I did do the markets on Sunday and had my charity store. It was extremely hot, about 36 Celsius with 92% humidity. Can't work out quite what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm a little tired. Um, I did drink a lot of water and fluids, but for some reason my body wasn't absorbing enough. So when I got home, my body internal body temperature was too high. I had to take a few tepid showers to get it down. And Reeves used his herbal magic and got me to drink some teas and things that help your body start absorbing the fluid. I was a little shaky at work yesterday, Monday, but I've come good now. So that's what the heat does to me. I'm not sure I'll do December markets next year if it's going to be that hot. I'm either getting too old and it was just a little bit too much for me. Um, even though things set up for me and thing packed up everything, just the heat itself. The sales were average, um, not as good as previous months. There wasn't as many people down there. Originally, we thought it was the heat, but we did find out that there was a handmade market being held at the showground pavilion, which was air conditioned, and that's where most of the crowd went. However, although the sales were average, I did make a profit, and I've decided my profit will go to the Good Samaritan's Giving Tree. Now, there's a giving tree in the foyer of one of the office blocks where one of my bosses works, the Good Samaritans put a list of what they'd like you to donate. It's not always just children's toys, it's adult presents. It can be food, it can be household goods. Um, if you're new to the channel, Cairns is a tourism town and COVID has affected us badly. So there are a lot of families who won't be having such a great Christmas. And the Good Samaritans will be putting together hampers and distributing to them to families who are in need. That's why it's important they get a variety of things donated. So that's what I'll be using my profit for. I looked at the list today and during my lunch hour tomorrow I will go out and buy some of those things on the list. I also throughout the year if I see something on special that I think would be great for a giving tree I will buy it and put it away and I do have a few things in my cupboard that I have bought during the year. Um, especially household goods. I found the most amazing set of mugs, um, really pretty china mugs that were really a good price and they're brand new in a box. I bought them from one of the department stores so I'll be donating those because they did have crockery um, on the list. So there you have it. That's what I will be doing with the profits from my charity market. Um, it makes me feel better as a person that I am paying it forward and thanking people and making sure that my community stays on its feet. Anyway, I also made, if you remember and you've been subscribed for a while, I made a Santa hat tea cosy that I was really proud of. because It was my pattern, but I didn't make notes, so I couldn't remember what I did. And it did sell very quickly. So I decided I would make another one um, after being encouraged by a lot of ladies who said they liked it. However... The second one hasn't turned out as well as the first one. Here we have it. So the first one I did the loopy stitch crochet and the bottom part looked like Santa's hair and the hat. This time I decided I would do the front post, back post rib. And although the bottom part looks good, I don't know what I've done wrong up here because it doesn't look as good up here. However, they do say the first cup of tea is the best. And when you reach for the second, it's never as good as the first. Hence, my second Santa hat tea cosy is not good as good as the first one. But that's one finished object I have done. So last video, or update video, I talked about number of whips. So thank you to all those people who gave me feedback on what their ideal number of whips is or what they try to have. Because you remember I said I like 5 to 8, but this, when I rounded up and cleaned up this year, I had 20, which shock horror is way too many. Feedback was 5 probably max, but 3 was ideal. So hopefully in 2022, I'll work on 3. But I have reduced them. 
So, so far, one whip I have frogged. It was something for Reeves. I used yarn I bought from London and it wasn't enough and I couldn't get any more of that yarn. It was discontinued and I had a ha harder search. I couldn't find a yarn that was compatible and that's why it sat there. So I decided frog it and do the project in a different yarn and save that yarn for a smaller project. So that brought it down to 19. My next one was because I'm running the birthstone make-along and we're in the 12th month. We've been doing it a year. It was time to finish mine. So for December, I did turquoise and purple for um, birthstones because there's a few in December. You can have blue topaz, turquoise or tanzanite. So I did turquoise and the purple represents tanzanite. I have said before when I make a lap gown I like to keep the ends on the sides um, especially if I'm going to donate them to charity just a moment I'm getting a little croak here I need a drink um, because then I can do an enclosed border and all the ends end up inside the border and they don't make a uninvited appearance I learned to do this enclosed border from a tutorial on Ophelia Talks. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description below. But she does have the YouTube channel. She's a lovely lady. Ophelia Talks. This is awesome. Hannah. Hannah is a name. I'm not very good tonight. I'm a little tired. I'll put a photo of my lap gown at the end. And uh, yes, we are getting some lovely photos posted of finished objects in the Make Along group. I've had a couple email me to their photos and have given me permission to do, if I do a photo montage, put them in there. Now, if you've posted your pictures in the Make Along group and want to give me permission to use them in a photo montage, just shoot me a quick email because I can save copies of the photos from the make along group and it would be awesome to have a few in the photo montage when we do the draw for the prize at the end of the year which will be the 5th of January I gave it an extension but yes I did this is just a standard v stitch blanket which I found easy to do for the make along which brings me to 2022's Make Along, which I'm really excited about. I had so much fun doing this, enjoying the feedback, such lovely comments, constructive criticism, you know, feedback on how you can do things better or what they thought. It was just so much fun and so informative that I'm really excited about 2022. So I have picked my pattern and I have picked something a little more difficult than a v-stitch blanket look one of the things is it can be any project it can be lots of little projects or one big project because i'm running the make long it's easy for me, easier for me to do one big project and do sections and show you but you can do anything and remember there'll be twice a month every fortnight an option to pick from to do your make along there'll be a small prize each month for the people who post pictures and one person will be the lucky random person picked and there'll be a mystery prize at the end of the year now towards the end of december i'll give you some more details it will kick off on the first of january and i cannot wait um and i'll be honest this all came about because thing came up with the idea he and reeves tossed around the tagline it's kind of corny but what's how, what the heck, we'll have fun. So keep watching the videos for 2022's Make Along. Just put that over there. Now, I've been doing my T2 advent calendar drawers sometimes every day, sometimes two days at a time, depending on time and how I'm feeling. And I said I'd review you every five days and give people feedback on the teas. Well, it's actually six days, so we'll start with um, day six was China Jasmine, a, a blend of green tea and jasmine produces a light yellow infused brew with a delicate jasmine aroma. Now, I've said before, I can't drink green tea. It really does upset my stomach. 
So Thing tried this because he's a big herbal tea drinker. And I did have a taste and a smell. It had a lovely, delicate aroma. And the green tea wasn't that strong, but still I wasn't going to risk it. He did enjoy China Jasmine, which reminds me, I'm going to digress. Trish, the knitting lady, was showing her jasmine plant like yonks ago. And I made the comment, when my jasmine flowers, I'll post a picture. So Trish, at the end of this video, is a picture of my jasmine. I'm sorry we don't have smell vision because it smells beautiful. It is struggling to flower in all this heat, but at night it is just lovely. Guys, if you haven't watched Trish the Knitting Lady, please go over there and subscribe. I always find something to smile about. She's such a lovely lady. I will put a link to her channel in the description below. So, day seven, Earl Grey. Now, I am a self-confessed tea addict. I love tea and my favourite is Earl Grey. I drink it all the time, every day. Twining's Earl Grey. So the T2 Earl Grey was supposed to read the same as Twining's. However, it's not a strong brew. It's quite delicate, but... It had a very perfumed aftertaste. I cannot put my finger on what that perfume flavour is, but I didn't really find it very pleasant. So T2's Earl Grey will not take the place of my Twining's Earl Grey. It's nice, but it's not great. So what came next? <gasps> peaches. Packs of peach. Now you have to like peaches if you want to try this tea. It has a very strong peach aroma. Now, I had this as an iced tea, and it was delicious. It tastes like peach. It smells like peach, and there is nothing else. It is just a glorious tea, especially iced. I would get more of this and try it as a hot tea just to see what it's like. But I did like this tea. Packs of peach. Then came English breakfast. Now, yet again, if I can't get Earl Grey, I will drink Twining's English breakfast, which is quite a strong brewed tea and very flavoursome. This is quite weak. And yet again, it has that perfumed aftertaste that I cannot put my finger on. Um, it's an unpleasant aftertaste. It's a nice tea, but it will not replace... Twining's English breakfast tea. So then we have, da -da -da -da, where is it? Tummy time. Now this is a little something yummy for your tummy. Here's a wonderful minty after dinner treat with a sumptuously smooth and sweet alternate aftertaste that'll linger in your mouth forever aftertaste that lingers in your mouth forever now reeves got me to drink this on sunday because or was it monday he got me to drink it because he's a firm believer in tea rehydrating you if you're not absorbing water then tea will do it for you whether it's herbal tea or normal tea coffee won't coffee's a diuretic but tea especially warm tea believe it or not helps rehydrate your system and he thought because i wasn't feeling well i should give this a go it is minty. It's not strong minty. Reeves really likes minty teas, especially after the Asthma Foundation tea recipe they gave me, which is peppermint tea leaves with elderberry flowers. It's really good for asthma and recommended by the Asthma Foundation. So he drinks a lot of minty teas having asthma. This one... Sorry, that was my phone going off. This one... That aftertaste is licorice. Very strong licorice aftertaste. Now, I like, like licorice to eat, but I do not like it in tea. It does linger, and it lingers in your mouth, on your palate forever. So you have to like licorice teas to like this one because it is overpowering to the mint in this tea. So... That brings us to day 11. Day 11 was creme brulee. Who doesn't like a creme brulee dessert? 
each year at Christmas time, one of the family get to pick what dessert we're going to have Christmas Day. And one year, Reeves picked black rice creme brulee. There was a restaurant in Cairns that made it and he loved it. And I went all out to find the black rice and do it properly. And it was almost as good as the restaurant, but boy, was it some work. I've told them they can pick simpler desserts next time. However, creme brulee tea, I've never heard of it before, but a decadent sweet treat. Velvety vanilla plays with rich caramel, smooth hazelnuts in a gloriously golden brew. Now, I was concerned when I read hazelnuts, not because I'm allergic, because I just don't like hazelnut flavour. But this does not have a strong hazelnut flavour. To be honest, I couldn't pick it. It is caramelly and vanilla and a really nice tea. Now, Thing's regular drink is vanilla and honey twinings herbal tea. And at night time, when he has that in the lounge room, the whole room smells of it. The aroma from that cup of tea is exceptionally strong and quite sickly. So when I read this, I thought, oh, not sure. It, I tried it hot and it is a nice tea. It's vanilla-y but not overpowering. It's caramelly but not overpowering. And I really couldn't taste any hazelnuts. But it is a nice tea. So out of the six teas, my number one favourite would have to be Packs of Peach. I loved it. It was just an awesome tea. And out of all the teas I've tried so far, it has moved to the top of the list as the favourite. For this six days, the second choice would be Creme Brulee. It was a really nice tea. And I did enjoy it. So guys, tonight, because I am still trying to rehydrate, one of the things I drank is Twining's Cold Infused Tea. This one is blueberry, apple and black currant. Basically, you put one of the herbal tea bags in a glass of really cold water and wait for it to brew a bit and that's your tea. It's not overly sweet. There's no sweetness to it, but there's no bitter aftertaste. And it is an enjoyable way of rehydrating. I'm not sure if you get this in USA or Canada or the UK. Let me know in the comments below if you do and if you've tried it. Now, some people have commented they've never tried an iced tea. To be honest, the American iced tea is quite strong and an acquired taste. I do like it, especially with lemon. But this is a great way to introduce a cold tea into your repertoire and try it on your palate. It's much lighter, fruitier and easier to stomach. The other thing I used to do and make, the girls in the bar would call me, is a Long Island iced tea. My patrons were only ever allowed to have one because there is copious amounts of alcohol in a Long Island style tea that put your iced tea that put you over the limit. But it is delicious if you like a little alcohol drop. So guys, that's my update for the week. A bit of this, a bit of that. Bit of happy mail and lots of tea. So remember, life's an adventure and you could have a Twinings cold infused tea and try a new adventure. Take care, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and thank you for all your lovely feedback. Bye for now.